questions I can't answer. He's got a gift. You are the girl with the dead family? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to our weekly film show where we're joined by director André Bonzel in the studio along with our critic Lisa Nesselson. Hello to both of you, André Hello. and Lisa. Now, André, your new film is a very, very personal documentary which premiered at Cannes last year in July. It's on release in France this week. It's called Et j'aime à la fureur in French and Flickering Ghosts of Love's Gone By in English. Now, this was a very creative project, which I believe was prompted by a phone call asking you to pick up some films. Can you explain? Yeah, well, I collect films since uh, I discovered cinema when I was young, and I collect amateur movie, home movies. And uh, I got a phone call from a notary who uh, told me that um, there was a bunch of films from my family to, to pick up. Um, you know, I had a short time to, to do it. And so I discovered films uh, that I didn't know um, from from my own story, and that was the beginning of uh, of wanting to make this film. Suddenly, it took on a very personal dimension. Well, let's yeah. take a look at some of the found footage that makes up this film with André's voiceover telling the story. Il semble étrange que les seules images filmées de ma mère qui reste, elle que je n'ai jamais beaucoup vu rire, la montre en train de se marrer. Et en regardant cette image de ma mère jeune, je m'aperçois que la plupart de mes souvenirs d'enfance lui sont liés. Now, Andre, your first film premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in 1992, and this second one in 2021. That is quite the gap. But, <laughs> yeah. Lisa, for you, it was definitely worth the wait. Absolutely. I love, love, love this movie. And that 30-year gap is part of what makes the film so poignant and also, I think, so funny. Some background. In International Critics Week at Cannes in 1992, a cult classic to be made its premiere, the faux documentary portrait of a serial killer who is charismatic and irreverent, made by three uh, film school friends, two Belgians and a Frenchman, André, uh, and who met in Brussels at film school. C'est arrivé près de chez vous, Man Bites Dog, in English, would travel the world and eventually end up the, on the cover of The Village Voice. After Man Bites Dog, the three film school buddies had uh, very different dates with destiny. Uh, Benoit Poulvord went on to a varied and flourishing acting career that continues to this day. In fact, he was on the jury in Cannes in 2004 at the uh, request of jury president Quentin Tarantino. Rémi Belvaux died young, sadly, in 2006, and André continued collecting found footage, as you have all your life. Andre, some people love old things that other people would throw away. I'm mm -hmm. one of them. Do you have a theory about why it is that old things sing to some people and not to others? <clears throat> I don't know. They tell us, you know, something about us. They tell us um, or their own, or own stories. And, and I think we inherit, that's one of the points of the film, is like we inherit from our ancestors without even knowing it. And um, it was a little bit this search of, you know, finding what I inherited without knowing it uh, through the films. So, and I love this film because it's people filming their own life. So they really, they, 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 they can tell us something about cinema, actually, because it's people who are shooting films and they ask themselves the same question as a, as a director would do, you know, what I want to show and thing. But usually they, they film people they love and they filmed the happy moment. And I think a little bit of, the, of that love remains in the footage, and that's why they make it so poignant. I mean, f for me, they're, they're really touching, you know. And watching this film, looking at these archives, I know that I started doubting the authenticity of my own childhood mm -hmm. memories. <laughs> and if we think about uh, Man Bites Dog, for example, which is an amazing example of the mockumentary or the fake mm -hmm. documentary with this film cr crew following a serial killer, what I wanted to ask you is how much can we trust what we see in this film, your new film? Yeah, in the new film. Well, you know, I tell my own story and it's really sincere and I really tell like everything I and mean, even like the, the sex uh, time of ad uh, adolescence, of teenaging years and things like that. But um, so it's all true. I mean, uh, after, you know, the, the point was like telling my own life with 
other people are footage to see, you know, to try to, to find if there's something in common, how you could do that. And that's why people, it's strange because it's sometimes telling your own story intimate that makes it more universal to any, anyone. And actually it kind of works because people see themselves in the, in the movie or tell, oh, that reminds me of this and this story, so... Mm, there's a lot of recognition there. And, and the music is by singer-songwriter Benjamin Biolet. He's a very well-respected musician yeah. and composer here in France. What was it like uh, collaborating with him, uh, this big talent, on a relatively small film? Well, it was a joy. It was first a joy that he accepted to, to do it because he's really, like, every, every French singer would love to have uh, one song made by him, <laughs> you know. So actually he made uh, more than 65 um, pieces, including songs. And uh, he told me he, he never worked so much for one single project. So that was really, uh, and <clears throat> I, I told him wh which instrument I like and things like that. But after a while I, I, I told him, you know, uh, make yourself happy. You know, you, when you have someone like Biolet, you don't tell him what to do. I mean, he, <laughs> you know, so, but, I think the the image and the film project inspired him, and and yeah, the the, the music is just beautiful. The score mm. is uh, it's amazing. He definitely had a feel for it. Now, uh, Man Bites Dog is black and white. To another black and white film set in the U.S. state of Indiana in 1817. The United States of America was just 40 years old then. Abraham Lincoln was still a boy. Tell us about this film, The Better Angels. Well, this is a swooningly immersive film by first-time writer director H. A. Edwards, who works with. Terence Malick, whose mystical influence is definitely in evidence. Edward sets out to show us an utterly modest childhood at one with nature in a frontier forest. And the obviously smart young boy and his family have no idea he'll grow up to be president of the United States at a particularly trying juncture in the nation's history. Jason Clark plays the father, a stern but fair man with a real talent for carpentry. Britt Marling plays his lovely, lovely pious mother, uh, who died young but foresaw great things for her inquisitive, slightly dreamy son. And Diane Kruger is wonderful as the widowed stepmother who comes to stay with two children of her own. Now, this film was inspired by true events garnered from the transcript of an interview with Lincoln's cousin, the only then living person who had known Abe as a boy and observed the rigors of of his early upbringing. Okay, well, let's take a look at the ethereal tone of The Better Angels. stay in these woods forever. He'll make his mark. Now, Lisa, I believe this film was made in 2013, but it's only being released now. Uh, and that's excellent news. Films have long lives. <laughs> um, and it's one in another long line of movies that makes me glad to have been born in the second half of the 20th century. Now, I loved playing with my Lincoln logs as a kid, uh, but I would not have enjoyed living in a real log cabin with my extended family. For one thing, if your cows ate the wrong thing and you drank their milk, that could kill you. Um, drinking contaminated water could kill you. Uh, the surroundings are incredibly down to earth, and I'd say yet almost unearthly. Children were intimately acquainted with death and bereavement. The expression, spare the rod and spoil the child, uh, that had real meaning. People didn't go to the gym. They split logs, plowed fields, uh, swam in the river, ran through the fields, balanced on other logs. Motion pictures were still a long way off, but watching this carefully composed film, I found myself confused that young Abe's life must have been very much like this. Mm, indeed, it was another time. Uh, now, to an acronym, uh, CODA. <laughs> it stands for Child of Deaf Adult, and that's the name of the movie that won three Oscars, Best Picture, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Now, CODA was adapted from a hitch French-language film called La Famille Bélier, who's well-known here in France. Lead actors learn sign language to play their roles. Lisa, tell us more about this one. Uh, well, until now, the only way French 
French audiences could see this adaptation was on Apple TV+. Plus. But that's changing this coming weekend because Coda was a movie made for theaters in English but funded by French producers. And it delighted audiences in Sundance uh, in January of last year. And Apple paid a record $25 million for the rights. Here in France, there is a strict distinction between movies that play in movie theaters and movies that originate for streaming services. No French film awards giving body yet has included Netflix or other streaming services for consideration the way the Oscars definitely have. But in light of the film's recent success at the Academy Awards, special dispensation has been secured to show Coda in French cinemas for 48 hours over the weekend. It's a humor-laced drama about a family who fish for a living in a port town in Massachusetts, the original French film took place on a farm. In each movie, mom, dad, and the son are deaf, only the daughter, about to graduate from high school and who would like to pursue a career in music and singing in the big city can hear, and so the others rely on her for, well, their commercial survival. In both versions, mom and dad have a very lusty sex life, and also in both, the daughter has to decide, do I stay with my family? Do I branch out on my own? It's pleasant enough entertainment, and it gives talented deaf actors to a t chance to shine, but declaring it the best film of the year for me is slightly less than aesthetically rigorous, shall we say. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for that roundup this week, Elisa. And André Bonsal, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We'll leave you with a glimpse of Coda, but do remember to check out our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. with you for the rest of my life. I've never done anything without my family before.